My name is Dina Bendale, and I am the co-founder of the Corporate Nurse Coach Academy, along with Amanda Johnson. I wanted to come on and tell you that I have a story to tell, and not because of fame or for lecture or for whatever it is that you want to call it. It is honestly for the state of being. Being true to who you are. Being true to what it is that you want to create and spreading that love to anyone that's out there. Last October or November, I was blessed to have a conversation with Steve Hardison. It actually started with me asking him, do you want to be on my podcast? He replied with no. He graciously said, no, no, thank you. But then gave me a call. That five minutes changed my life. One, why is Steve Hardison talking to me? After multiple conversations with him, being loved by him, him talking to me about my fears, talking to me about conversations, talking to me about how my dream of opening up my special needs community school is going to occur. He gave me a challenge. He told me if everyone in my academy were to read the book, The Ultimate Nurse Coach, that's what I did. And they read it with reading the, the back of the cover in the first two pages and to read it for themselves, not about him. And I gave him an end date for my, my daughter's birthday. It was December 19th, 2022. Called him back and I told him, guess what? Everyone in my cohort has read the book. He has then committed to me for a conversation with my cohort. Not because, you know, for gratitude, not because of whatever, it wasn't by circumstance. It was because of me being who I want to be. He saw something in me that no one else has ever seen. That no one else has ever seen in my entire life. He understood me in less than 30 seconds of that first conversation. After many conversations back and forth, it turned into real long conversations. He asked me one day, Bina, how can I serve you? I told him, you know, Steve, I can ask anything I want to ask in this world. And I'm at a state of calmness. I'm at a state of feeling okay with what it is that I'm doing in my life. And his response to me was, that's because you're being. You are in the state of being. So I said, hmm, okay. And he goes, Bina, did you have an aha uh -huh moment? I'm looking down and I'm like, I guess, because I'm still in my head going, I'm still talking to Steve Hardison. Like, what is going on here? But I took it with such grace. And so I told him, I'm like, yeah, Steve, I did. I, I guess I am having an aha moment. And his words to me was unpresidential. He goes, people pay me hundreds and thousands of dollars to get to where I was in 15 minutes because I already know my state of being. I already know what I need to do in this world. I already know that with judgment or without judgment, no one's going to stop me. People can tell me no all the time. People told me no all the time. And I know after seeing this video of Steve Hardison, you know, talking to, to my cohort. Why Bina? And the number one question is, is because, or the number one answer is, it's because Bina is Bina. I want everyone to understand that the power of being is who you are, not for you to judge what anyone else is doing. There's room for judgment, but then learn from it. You have to create what it is that you are trying to create. 
that needs to come from love, from who you truly are, your authentic you. I wrote down, I think in the December of 2022 on my wall, I wrote a manifesto, which now I realize is my document. That's who I am. I'm not perfect. And I don't ever want to be perfect. Like Steve Hardison would, would say, I'm under construction. I'm always learning. I'm always adapting. And this is the first time, maybe the third, he's never allowed people to videotape him. He allowed my group to be interviewed and to be taped because we all came from the state of being. I'm blessed to show you and to share with the world what it is that my mine and Amanda's Academy has brought. But with that being said, I want you to watch this with intention. I want you to watch this with what can you do for yourself to change a pattern and to deep down see what it is that you want to do. What do you want to create? And only then I'd give you the video. Because that commitment to yourself, so much more powerful. And I want to challenge that. Challenge you to be who you are, no matter what other people say. Because who cares? It doesn't matter. Because you you have to be truly authentic to who you are for your state of being to come from a place of love for that to share to the entire world. And even if you change one person, you have changed one person. And that one person will change another person because we're just planting seeds. And every seed will grow with water, with nourishment, with love. So with all due, with all due here you are. You guys are going to witness something that has never been done before, especially in the nurse coaching realm. Steve Hardison giving back to the nurse coaches. Steve Hardison being him, believing in me, trusting me to share this with you guys. And I'm blessed from the bottom of my heart to be showing this. So thank you, enjoy the video. All I ask in return is to please go buy the book. Read the book for who it is that you want to be. Read it like the book states, the back of the page with the first two covers, first two pages, and then read it as if it's you in the book. Once that is done, reach out to me. We'll have a conversation. If you're feeling stuck, you just don't know what it is that it is, what's calling you, reach out to me and Amanda. That is what our entire academy is based on. We want you to create what it is that you want to create. Because you being you is special. So enjoy. And I'll talk to you guys soon. And I'm blessed to know each and every one of you. And God bless you all. You don't, you go, you go tell a bunch of other people that, that doesn't mean that's what I do. That's mean what I did with you. Correct. Yes. But before we end, because you've seen the BNS interview, I think that would be a good thing to end on so you can see how that got created. Because that didn't just fall out of the, the sky, nor, nor is there anything that I do just falls on me. It's all created. Right. And see, people are waiting for something to happen. It ain't going to happen unless you create it. That's the, that's the good news and the bad news. That's good. what I loved about your interview with uh, BNS. I, I, the one quote you said, I am to you ideas you have about me yes. um it just makes me feel like you know you have your opinion i have my opinion but you need to be who you are yes. and bring it out and it um i mean I, I sat there and watched that and it was so exciting and it was just so 
I mean, exhilarating. And I just, yes. I learned things from that as well as from the book. You know, you can have fun in life, even though you have your ups and downs and you go through your trials and tribulations and you are working so hard, there always will be a rainbow on the other end if you make it and you yourself. Um, you know, just your story about going to get peanut butter and the honey and the sandwich, banana sandwich kind of stuff, you know, the way you did it. Um, it just, that's the, I'm a fun person. I like to have fun yeah. I like to, you know, um, do things like that. And there's, you know, there's a time to be serious, but if you have to have a little bit of fun in it. Yes. And that's what I got out of the book was that, yes, even though you didn't want to have the book written about you. Um, you interjected, they wrote too, I mean, um, about an angel being an angel in presence or the best macaroni and cheese you ever had. You want to wet your pants kind of thing. Um, those are the things that really, you know, they speak to me. That's, you know, that's, one, of, that's one of my many girlfriends. That's a young, I, <laughs> I'm in love with about 300 women. <laughs> and my wife should walk in sometime that wrote the book. This is her, I'm in her office. My office is sacred. I don't, I wouldn't cut one of these anywhere in my office. Yeah. Yeah. So th thank you. And it's amazing what you you've got. I invite you because this is what comes to me in speaking with you. You've seen a video, a, a BNS video that has some impact on you, whether someone reads a book or goes to India, maybe, maybe not. But anyone you share that with. They'll find something for themselves and guess who they'll appreciate for it. You because you got it to them. I don't need anything. But see what people do as a concept is they get a seed and they don't plant it. They say, I saw this great thing. And then they stick it on a shelf. Every seed I get, guess what I do with it? Plant, 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 it. plant it. I got orchards plant everywhere it. forever. Yeah. And I don't go, oh, I'm, I got too many. I keep planting. Then I give them to other people. Right. I have a gal who did a, an interview. She lives in uh, Edinburgh. She's coming to the event in India. And she did an interview about the event, and I called her up and said, that was as good as anything I've seen. Now, what you want to do is don't leave that on a shelf. Share it with people. Oh, you know, people, like, I'm pushing, I'm selling. Good, you're going to have a problem. And she said, I didn't realize it was that good. I said, that's as good as anything I've seen. She said, you know what I did right after she did that? I deleted it. So that's her judging herself. I said, go get it back. You do that and you'll have people that watch that and they'll be in that event with you. See, mm -hmm. that's taking a seed and not giving it a chance. Quit judging it. When a farmer goes and plants, he doesn't mean, I wonder if this one will grow. Oh, no, that, that ground might not be right. It may, the, the wind may be a little bit prejudiced. Hell, plant it. Plant your seeds. Plant them all the time. It won't grow unless special. you plant it. Sorry? It won't Correct. grow it won't unless grow you, plant until it. you plant it. Yes, and it's everything. Like like you said, you like to have fun. Mm -hmm. Again, there is, I can't wait to get up in the morning. I can't wait for all the people I meet. I'm going to do something that's great every day and have fun. I'm, I don't care what I get. I get a great life while I'm doing it. You know, stretch a little bit. Say hello to somebody. Help somebody. The small stuff. People that were so afraid inside. Anything right. else you want to say, Monica? Thank you. I mean. I, I was just, I've been doing some, you know, lives on Facebook and stuff like that recently. And I used to be one of those people that was always concerned about how I looked, what all this kind of stuff. I mean, I got on the other day and I'm like, I am a hot mess doing some messy action, but I want to read this to you because I think it's important. And, um, and I share that. So I share it with people and the video that I watched that BNS did with you, I want to share that with people as well. My husband was watching it behind my shoulder and he's like, who is that you're watching? Yes. You know, and he'd, he'd come back and forth and he'd kind of look over my shoulder again. And I was like, he was intrigued. So, um, so, so I thank just, you. Let me just be where you're at and assist you all right now. This will, this will help you with your business. I don't care what business it's in. So I want you to see that you have said something really powerful. You saw it. It had some impact on you. Your husband watched a little bit. Now, watch this. Write this down and do, do what I'm going to exp If I tell you to do something, you actually do it, you'll get the fruit of it. You put it on a shelf. What did the guy know? Big deal. Write down the name, John Patrick Morgan. I promise you it'll be worth your weight in gold. Then write down the name. Devin Bandison, African-American client that we created into being the go-to mind coach of the NBA. We made it up in my office. That's who he is now. 
you know, you'll see a yawn that's going to do just what I'm telling you to do. She's doing it right now. Well, you and I are sitting here. She is at her desk in uh, Davidsonville, Maryland, present doing exactly what I'm telling you to do because she could see what's going to happen. So here's what I want you to do. Those of you, this is not for me. This is for you. Those of you who have watched that BNS video and it had some impact on you, I'm going to ask you to share it any way you can. Your own Facebook page, you got a private page, share it, but watch how I'm going to have you share it. It'll make a huge difference. <laughs> My client from England, one day he said, Hey, I want to take something and share what you said. Can I do that? I said, Yes, but don't give it away. Say on the preamble, hey, I've got something that I did with Steve Hardison. If you want it, request it and I'll send it. Now, I want you to know I could have somebody post that video that you like, Monica, and you just post it. And at the end of the day, you'll get 10 people who may say something. Post mm -hmm. it the way I'm going to ins instruct you. You'll get hundreds. How would mm -hmm. you like to have, be able to move a 10 to 100? And absolutely can, yeah it's very that would good be like a blessing in itself just because even like with what we're creating here you, you, right watch what like, will happen so i want yeah. you to go over to either john morgan's devin bandison's mm -hmm. or on kish a-n-k-u-s-h oh yep, yep I know mm -hmm. and you'll see what they've done they've done a preamble of their experience like their preamble Ankish's would be i've worked with steve hardison watching this is like being in an office with him if you want it communicate yep 464 now you have your own thing i was just on a, I, in order to be on this video with bina we needed to read this book and yep. i watched this let me tell you what it was like and then you tell what it was like for you i'm not asking you to say something for me what was it like for you if you'd like a copy of this just say down below and then all you do the next day is send them the link and they awesome. will love it that you got the link for it plus it has you communicating with someone Plus, someone could go, hey, I'll get that book. That would improve their life. My situation in India, I'm not making any money on any of these events. 100% right. is given away. I'm not making money on a book. Hmm. I'm creating being, and I'm being what I talk about. This is my book. So I challenge you all to go to one of those three. Now, some of you won't do this. This is a seed you'll sit on a shelf. This is the stupidity of humanity. I'm giving, and someone will go, oh, nice idea. I don't want to do that. Well, then. Three, don't be on this call. Go somewhere else. I mean, that was all the love I can. <laughs> so I promise you, if you'll do that, and you can go look at three different data points, you want to wait a while, and I wouldn't wait, go and see what Yanla's done, because she knows how to really put something on. And I said, do not give it to them. They need to ask mm -hmm. for it. Because if they ask for it, it's why they watch it. If it's just there, and they don't, oh, that's video. I don't have an hour. Oh, that, I don't know. If somebody makes mm -hmm. something that, is tempting to look at it, you blow it up. This group right here could alter, literally alter the consciousness from just doing that. Wow, it's powerful. challenge accepted. For it, I don't. We can make sure it. that challenge is accepted, Steve. No. Well, let's let's see, let's see who will accept that challenge. Don't raise your uh -huh. hand out of like community stuff, because oh, yeah. then you can't even be your word. I'll put my hand up. I don't plan on doing that, and I promise you, you'll get great return in a connection with people mm. who's next i guess I'm I can go. Go ahead. someone else no nope, but okay <laughs> thank you monica um yeah i actually i just really wanted to say that the the book was amazing for me and really my biggest takeaway was your capacity for love and the way that you give you know and that it, it really helped me to embody that Yes. idea that concept because you know it's something that i've always been fairly good at you know but i feel like i show up differently as a father and as a husband just with that one concept by itself you know and then beautiful you no know, that just it really made a huge impact on me and it really made me rethink you know my love and what i give and you know my integrity yes now yeah. listen to what tyler just said that's his preamble to hey if you want to see a little bit more about this watch this video so you get to yeah. share about what you got from the book. Yeah. What you just said. Yeah. Somebody yeah. sees that. You, know, you want to learn more? Boom. They're going to go look at that. Because yeah, that's a big impact. Rocket from science. Really was. Just share what you feel. Did you yeah. have anything that you want to say? That's fabulous. 
Uh, boy, I, I, I don't really have it. I'm not a big talker. If you ask everybody here, I, I take up a little bit of time here and there. But yeah, I, that was really my biggest takeaway. You know, so much of it really resonated. I loved <laughs> hearing all the people just talk about how great it was to have that experience with you. Yes. And I would love to be able to transfer that into my own practice and to have yes. my own clients be able to sing my praises, you know, it's, it really, already had one with a really positive review that really felt good too. It's really easy for you to do that. The gentleman who just spoke with me, be mm -hmm. that guy. Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? And be that a little more frequently. Yeah. Watch this. I'm going to create something with you. Nothing occurs in this reality, except it happens in a conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to all of a sudden go marry someone that I haven't talked to. Yeah. I'm not all of a sudden going to buy a house I haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. The only way anything moves in this world is through a conversation. So if someone can get that conversations are important, and then the quality of conversation is important, guess what one would increase having? Value conversations conversation yeah my, every one of my questions are simple the answer's in the question i'm yeah. the simplest dude on the world in the planet i'm talking about conversations guess what the answer to the question is going to be good we get 100 percent. everybody gets it right get in with it <laughs> so if everything occurs in a conversation and i promise you it does there will be a conversation in your head or with your partner or with somebody Behind me is an Indian reservation. If I open up the window, there's not all of a sudden going to be a casino there. What will happen is somebody on the Indian res reservation will talk to somebody about the possibility of a casino. And there'll be a ton of conversations. Mm -hmm. There'll be a conversation of building it. They don't just get there. So my good friend that just said, you don't have many conversations, you're powerful. Shut off your ideas about talking and open your freaking mouth. Mm. Man, you got uh, such a good spirit. Quit whatever you're saying to you. Stop that conversation. Because only in a conversation do you stop or start. Well, since you're having a conversation about stopping you, guess what you could do? The answer's in the question. You could have conversations that start you. Like right now with me and you. It would be like, okay, let's say you have three conversations and you've got beautiful conversations. Let's do four tomorrow. Five, six. Do you, do you know why you can't hardly hear my voice? The number of conversations I'm in already today. <laughs> literally. Literally. Yeah. I love Michael it. Michael Neal, Rich Litman, Yana Van Sant, somebody that needs some help, a stranger, because nothing happens. You want to sit and meditate? Good. You're going to have a nice mind. Wait till you have to get up and do something. <laughs> right. Now, can I say something sure. else to you, Tyler? Yes, please do. <clears throat> the most important work you will ever do will be within the four walls of your own home. Mm. No other success compensates for failure in the home. Thank you for being a great father. Now open your mouth and be great at whatever you do and be okay to be great at it and let people do whatever they do with it, but don't stop you. Absolutely. Good, Another one of my biggest takeaways was patience in that, you know, being patient through a conversation because I used to, you know, cut people off sometimes because I wanted to have my own ideas spread so much. And I've, I've largely tried to let go of that because of your book that made a huge difference. And, you know, actually my program that I'm starting to build right now is for fathers. And the idea is to strengthen the father figure and who they are showing up as in the family. And uh, a big reason why I called to that was because of the book and that really helped me identify who I was being. May I say something to you? Yes. The Devin Bandison that I said, go over and look at their little preamble, how he did it. He wrote yeah. a book called Fatherhood is Leadership. It's amazing. Devin, some years ago, was a great athlete, decided to drink a little bit more than he needed. And he was in an accident and uh, it killed the guy in the car. So he spent some time behind jar, uh, bars. And he, when he came out, he wanted to make a difference in his life. Man, the dude has written Fatherhood as Leadership, has created a game changer, is the go-to mind coach. He's just changed his mind about who he's going to be. Get his book. I will. It's a, an amazing yeah. book. You know, if you go on and see the uh, preamble that he did, 
uh, go over and friend me. Say, hey, thanks for the model for me to be able to do that. And I've done what you did with the BNS interview is cool. Hey, let's say hello. So now you've met Devin Bandison. You put <laughs> things out. Those are seeds. They're all over. I'm going to throw them everywhere. Grab them and plant them. And people are throwing them to you all day long. All day long, this is happening. If I sat with you and went somewhere, I said, grab that one. We can do this one. Okay, look at that one. And not in a hurry. They're everywhere. Beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to go get a throat loss engine. You guys can decide who's next. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll share when he comes back. All right. That was awesome, Tyler. <laughs> this yeah. is great. And uh, Daphne, I apologize. I did not get that. Okay. What's up? It's going to be Brian. Brian's next. All right. Hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. Um, so like many of us, a lot of pieces of your book really stood out to me. Um, and when I think about the beginning of the book, you really painted the picture of possibility, regardless of where you came from and what your upbringing was. And then, of course, a lot of the meat of the book was the power in your coaching and what you support others and make possible. But what really brought me to tears is the end of the book where we'll see if I come to tears now, but where you really gave me permission to be all of me. Wow. <laughs> like I can be the powerful coach and I can be the wild woman on the dance floor or yes. I can be the goofy sister and I can be all of that. And I don't have to put myself in a box of I'm a powerful yes. coach. So that's who I am all the time. Love it. Save me a dance. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the loop. I'm in the loop with headphones on. And my wife and kids go, Dad's going to break loose here. And I just start dancing. There are people with video cameras. I don't. Let's go. I you do that a lot. Yeah, dance. Dance. <laughs> There's a lot of dancing on this call, too. Love, don't hey, worry. You know, if I were in the room with you, and same with Tyler and same with Monica, and same with it, if it were a big doofy dude or somebody that wouldn't think's a great lady, I would be hugging you and loving you. In my <laughs> office, I say, is it okay if I touch you? And they say, yeah, I hug him. I'd be holding you so tight and say, go for it. You got it. Let it out. Be you. No, everybody doesn't have to be what you're going to be or me, but be you. Let's be beautiful being you. Absolutely. Just Absolutely. be you. And then let the chips fall where they may. People will kind of say, hey, I didn't like that. And then you go, I'm sorry, but be you. Be you. I mean, what could be easier than being you? Forget right. all the other stuff, be you. And then have that being create what you do. Mm. What else do you want to say? Yeah, what's just coming up for me is um, like the the ability to be okay that if being all of me isn't accepted by everyone right if we're not liked by everyone um and everyone isn't our client or our friend or alongside us um being okay with letting those pieces fall where they may um yes. because i'm so solid in or we are so solid in being yes, yes. yes. so i'm going to say something to you again there's a lot that book is a tip of an iceberg Steve Chandler wanted to write the book and he said it'd be 16 volumes. I said, Nobody's going to want to read all that. But so I'm just taking a tip of an iceberg and sharing something with you. See, the probably the most important thing in the book that it, you can only touch a bit is in order to create a declaration, you have to be able to forgive yourself of all the stuff that's inside. And people don't, that don't, and they're judging themselves inside and they're trying to be this, this is driving them. So, so I'm just saying that there's a lot of underground work that people don't do they want like give me a pill or give me an affirmation it's not like that i'm under construction but there's a piece of what i share with people i'm going to try to drop in on you meaning there's a lot of foundational work that would be better if you had it when i say this go what the hell is he talking about so try to what the hell am i talking about with me except get it okay i'm going to say something so i'm going to ask you like i don't care what he's talking about i'm going to get it can you just do that in your head Whatever he's about now to say to me, I'm going to get it rather than I don't get that. Or how am I going to get that? Or because mm -hmm. if you can say that, I can say something to you. Will you yes. get whatever I'm saying? I will get whatever you're saying. That's half of the battle. Now, here's what I want you to know. No matter how you're being, people over there are judging you all the time. 
It doesn't matter what you do. That's what people do. So I'm looking out at people and they're judging me all the time. It's like, okay, now I may think this guy really likes me and he thinks I'm a jerk. And I think, oh, she, she doesn't like me and she really likes me. We don't know. And even if they tell us we don't know, do you know how much we lie to each other? <laughs> so, hey, play your game and live it. You don't know what they're doing and they're judging you anyway. Doesn't matter how good you get. See, while I'm sitting here talking, I got this many data points about me and they're not the same. There's actually one of you in here is like, this guy's really full of himself and I could call you out, but I won't. <laughs> okay, there's two. <laughs> Can I you hear that? that? Awesome. I'm going to be me and they're going to do whatever they do. The oh my God, really I want to get me, we'll get something. They won't. They won't. That's not up to me. Mm. So Brianna, be you. And they are going to judge and be okay. That's what we do. And, and if you want to really, you know, curb the judging, start with you. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking out there. Like this is a full-time job for me to stop my judgments. I know they're going to do it and I'm going to reduce mine if I want to. I'm not going to worry about what they're doing. That, that's, that's a lot. How about if I just work with this? And then when I create a document in my life that's done on foundational work, then all I do during the day is practice being that. Mm -hmm. With this text, with this phone call, with this accident I get in, with this, I'm just practicing being me. That's all I do all day long. And everything is my practice, including this call, including when the mailman comes. There's no, there's not like, oh, some other time I'm not being. You're never not being. I'm practicing being. And I'm going to be me. And I know who me is. I am the universe. Love is. I am that. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm a disciple of you. I get, that's me. Right. Somebody else could be Krishna, Allah. I don't care. That's cool. They could have a rock. I'm good with that. I don't have the truth. I just have a creation who I'm going to be. Be you. And by the way, you're fun to look at. You're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, go with it. And, and I'm serious. I want to dance with you one day somewhere. Let's do we'll it. Make it happen. I'm old enough to be your grandfather, but Bob Delia. <laughs> Oh, quick one. Daphne, you'll like this one. It's in the book. I'm on a cruise and there's a dance competition yeah. and they want these people to do Tina Turner. Well, there's no guy going to go up there. I go up and I beat all the women. I can dance as good as Jagger. And if you want some, I'll send you some. You'll see it. I like dancing. I don't care who's watching. And I don't care. I remember that part. I, I remember that I get part. a dance. <laughs> Steve, I'm going to send you a link. Uh, Daphne's hosting her first workshop with Love Your Body workshop. It. Send it to me. I'll send you the link for her. Anything else, Brianna? I feel complete. Thank you for pouring into me, Steve. Gave me a oh. dance. You got it. Erin, <laughs> go ahead. You unmuted oh. yourself. No, I if did. You don't have something to say. That's cool too. No, I do have something to say. I definitely do. Um, I wanted to talk <laughs> about, for me, uh, what what spoke out to me. What I heard in myself was that unconditional love in the conversations with others, um, kind of tying what you're just mentioning, and um, how quickly as nurses, unfortunately, we get bogged down with um, not seeing that unconditional love sometimes with what we do in our daily job, especially mm. at the bedside. And the part where you um, connected with the man that your wife had called the police on, or yes. that, that oh, yeah. really, that really kind of gave me a, a, a really like, Hey, inner, inner check within myself. Dominique Antoine White. I'll never forget him. I'll never forget looking into his eyes. You got the short version in the book. I'm mm -hmm. eye to eye with him. My neighbor wants to shoot him. Yeah. And I'm eye to eye with him. And I say, Damo. Are you wanting to hurt me? He said, no. I said, let me open the gate and I'll come out and talk to you. And I went and sat and talked to him as a human being. And when the police came to take him, I said, this, I love this man. Be gentle with him. Because when police are chasing somebody down for a while, it's a rough gig, man. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when, the, when the police were done with it and got the car and got him loaded up, the car that was stolen. And then, again, you can't put all this in a book. It takes too long. But I'm going to share it with you because you said something about it. Is that okay? Yeah. So... The guy that's the, like supervisor over is in a flak jacket. He said, this isn't how these normally go down. We've been, this guy's been on the fly since May 25th. And this is June 7th. And he said, we have four people, flak jack guys, big guys to control him. And you got him where we can just talk to him. And he's 
subdued. And I said, yeah, because I'm treating him like he's a human. Mm -hmm. I know he may have mm -hmm. something that he's done wrong, but he's still a human. Yes. And so yeah. as that guy that's, he's the last one writing up the report, sitting in my driveway. And by the way, while this is all going on, I have a client. I'm working with all that while I got a client I'm coaching. And that client's like, I apologized to him. He said, no, you don't even, I saw you work with a cop and a convict and you loved them all. No, I got my money's worth. I know what to do in my life from watching oh, that. Man. So I say to the superintendent as I walk by, do you need me to do anything else? And he said, no. He said, just one thing. Tell me, who in the hell are you? And I said, I'm the universe. Love is. I am that. Be still and know that I'm God. I don't get this far and the guy's weeping. He's in a flak jacket. I'm just being me everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Amy, if you come by this way, I'd like these people just to see my gorgeous wife, the lady who wrote the book. And if you don't have time, that's cool too. <clears throat> so thank you for that. What you want to say any more about that? No, I just really, I appreciate that but deeply. Now, can I say something to you specifically, Aaron, and other people can listen yes, and sir. they can get seeds and I'd ask that you plant them. Yes, sir. I'm not perfect and I don't want to be perfect. I'm just trying to improve. So anything that I'm talking to any about, I'm working on it. Anything that I give to a client, I work on it that week. Anything. I am under construction. But there is something that I really, really am working at mastering, and that is loving. And so when people say to me, you know, you, you, you talk about love. How are you doing this? And I say this, and if you've heard this, Hear it in a new place from my mouth to your ear. I am never seeking love. I'm never out looking for it. No. That has it be limited. What I do in every interaction is I create it. I create it. Love is a creation. It doesn't sit there anywhere. If, if there is some, bring me some. I'll give you some big money for a cup of love. You won't get it. The only place love exists is my speaking of it, thinking of it, or behaving of it. So I'm not seeking love. I'm creating it everywhere I go. I created it with the guy that was a felon. I create it everywhere I go. I create it everywhere I go. I'm creating it with Aaron. I'm creating it with Brianna. I'm creating it with Tyler. I'm creating it with Monica. I'm creating love. You may not experience, but I'm loving. So if I'm creating love everywhere I go, guess what I'm always in? The answer's in the question. Love. Love. love love how simple is that and when you're like seeking it stop doing that go create it and then you'll have it thanks mm. yeah i'll go next thanks elizabeth um i just want to say that reading the book from my own life really really helped me see things that i was missing and I've been struggling in my relationship with my husband for years. And I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, you just need to get out of that relationship. Just leave that relationship. And I want to say probably three fourths of the way through that book, I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is what I really needed to see is like that maybe this isn't for me. And it wasn't until the very end of that where I'm like, I'm totally missing the point. Mm -hmm. And for me to be able to sit back and go, holy shit, I have to work hard and I really have to open up all of those doors that I closed because I was hurt so much yes. mm -hmm. and just to be a different person. So seriously under construction <laughs> um, and just trying to pour love into myself so I can help others heal that damage. I mean, that's, that's what your book amy's book has done for me and then just like ayana's books like i'm working on finding all of the things that breathe that life into me so i can be the being that i need to be so yes. for that i am for everything thank you did you hear what you said earlier you said i have all these challenges in my marriage and i have for a long time i didn't yeah. want to interrupt you but i want to say me too yeah right See, that's and the that's reality what, of it yeah absolutely it's it's a job and if, yes, if, if anybody has a good relationship, they're working their butt off. Yeah. I, I mean, I could give you facts and figures about how many relationships don't work. And it's not 50-50 divorces. It's like 2% actually work. There are yeah. a lot of people in a business situation like putting up with him or her. Mm -hmm. 
they're married, but they don't have a marriage. So it's hard work. Now, there have been people who've read the book, couples that were ready to leave each other. And I'm not saying people shouldn't get a divorce. That's up to them. I don't know who should stay together. You, you, can, you get to know that. But I do know if someone shifts their being, any two relationships could work if they want it to. There's a guy named uh, Casey Gilman, G-I-L-M-A-N, and his wife, Lindsay Gilman. They were ready to leave each other. They both read the book and they have put stuff together and they now do relationship coaching. Not like from a theory, like from the hard work of it. Thanks, Elizabeth, for what you see. Yeah. You know, Amy can hear me. She's in getting ready for something, but she knows, wow, you know, I'm, I'm not a piece of cake to live with. You know, I'm always apologizing. There's always dumb stuff I'm doing. I'm just learning. But there's never an intention where I'm not loving her. Maybe my... Uh, how I do it doesn't work right. And she's the most patient woman in the world, but I'm, I'm constantly doing it. I'm constantly learning how to love and I'm constantly loving and I'm forgiving myself and other people who don't know, don't love or don't want to love, but I'm not going to go try to get it from someone. That's crazy. That means something's missing. I, there's love everywhere. There's so much love in you this day with this husband you're working with and you know, you're seeing new things. Some, somehow this day, no matter how what he's done, leave him a note or two about something good he did or let him know you love him. I'm working out in the gym this morning. Amy's working on this machine and I'm down on the ground. She's all sweaty and she gets underneath the bar I'm pushing up and comes and kisses me. We're oh. doing that every day to keep a relationship alive. Some people, I remember being with the client, I said, when's the last time you told your wife you love her? It's like, well, 1986. He said, dude, we're in 2020. I said, I'm doing that 30 times today in some way. And then cleaning up my mess when I like do something stupid, which I do often. Elizabeth, thanks for your good work. Thank you. Yes, you did the work. You, you're going to see whatever you see. And I think relationship is the place where the growth is at and people quit mm -hmm. way too soon. And it feels like that's what they should do because it looks bad. But I'm talking about people that hit each other that could learn to stop hitting each other and could actually love each other. Mm. Bless that. Amanda. Yes. Um, so in the book, so many people have hit on what hit for me in this book, but ultimately I think it's the journey, the journey from listening from your childhood and how you grew up but how that doesn't define who you are today. And through each point along the way you learned to be. And one of the pivotal moments was just like uh, Aaron was saying with the, with the convict who you showed love. I have worked in leadership and nursing uh, ER for so long and seen so much hurt come through because people treat people based on a title or a persona that they present instead of just loving them. And that is something I have always leaned into, but have always been the outcast to do so. And I think what resonates most in, in your book with me is that it doesn't matter what I look like. It matters who I be. That's correct. And loving each of these people, no matter how um, society sees them. So yeah. loving the homeless person just as much as I love my children and love my husband mm -hmm. to instill all of me into each and every interaction yes. is exactly what I'm called to do and what I feel is my purpose to do. And yeah. by reading your book and seeing this whole journey transform from childhood through your mission, your, your mission really spoke to me and to how you just went out there and went after it. Cause yes. that's the tenacity that I have, but it, you don't see that very often in this world and, and seeing that I'm like, it's like it gave me permission all over again yes, I love to do that. that in my daily work. I love that. One of the things that's happened is, uh, is this kind of a picture in my mind with my clients or anybody who reads this book about them. So there's something about, and it's not like me personally, it's right. about who I'm being that I'm, I'm like creating a tent that's really big so people can know they can play. There's more space to play. I something in who I'm being gives them permission to be them and like play a little bigger in whatever. 
like be okay to be you or, or take a risk you weren't going to take. I mean, there's, there's nothing in my mind that has me say, I can't help somebody. No, I'm not, not saying people shouldn't be safe and whatever, but, but I say, I don't have that because I'm like, how many of you know Byron Katie? Okay. So she and I have a lot of work we've done together and I've had her blah, blah, blah. She, she literally, there's no fear in her about anything outside of her because of her thoughts. And there are things people want to be afraid of. And there's people that are afraid of everything, but it's just a continuum of where you're at and coming from a place where you can love other people, no matter what they look like, smell like, what color they are, what religion they are. It it just changes the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that you're doing that. And it's practice, but there is no one, there is no one that I can't love. And I'm not saying other people should, or that's the right thing to do. You do whatever you want, but there's no one I can't love. I remember, and I'm not promoting what people do. I'm not condoning bad behavior, but people do what they do. If we looked at ourselves under a microscope and everybody knew these things we do ourselves that nobody knows, we're all kind of a little weird. If you really look mm-hmm. at it, you know, take a look yeah, at the mm-hmm. things you do that you wish. I hope nobody ever knows that. So mm-hmm. I'm not condoning our misbehavior or things where we do stuff wrong, but I'm stating that I can love anyone. I remember this guy recently that was on national TV. And he had abused a lot of these gymnasts. And I'm not, mm. I'm not condoning that. That's horrible. That's horrible. Right. But I watched him in his sentencing. And it was everyone like, you're a dog. You should be dead. And I get that that's how they would feel if there was something happened to their daughter. I'm not oblivious to that. But I saw him in the courtroom. And then the judge said what she said. And everybody got what they got. And he made big, stupid mistakes. But if I were in that courtroom, the bailiff would have hung me up and so would have all the parents of the daughters because I would have walked over to him and said, you made some big mistakes. I mean, these are big mistakes you made, but I want you to know, I know there's some good there in you somewhere and I Mm. love you. And people would hang me. They would shoot me. They would hit me with sticks. That's still what I would have said. Mm. This is either good in people, no matter what. I'm going to, there's, I'm going to look for some way to love them. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Susan, did you want to say anything? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I'm just, um, I don't know if the word is shy, nervous, scared, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but what you just said, um, I've always um, been of the heart to lift people up no matter what. Um, and it's not accepted or it's not, yeah, you can get shot for it, you know, if you're, uh, you're not careful kind of thing. Yes. Um, so um, I think I got more out of the interview that I just watched than the, the book was wonderful. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe I'm more visual. I don't know. Or, um, but um, I, I learned that how much my heart is still closed and my armor is still up. I've come a long way. Um, with that, but um, I've always, always found, saw the good in people, no matter what. Um, my parents took all kinds of people in when I was young, and um, I think they taught me that, which is, you know, awesome. But, um, and then when you talk about conversation, to me, that's connection, right? Connection is where yes. God is. Yes. Yeah. That's where God is. And I learned that through Alcoholics Anonymous. Yes. Um, that the principles we learn in the 12 steps. I don't know how much you know about that, but it's powerful. I know a lot. The big book. I love it. Yeah. It's powerful. Divinely written, I think. Um, But, um, and you know, my actions aren't always in line with my values. And I heard you talking about that too. And, um, and, oh, and I did think you were arrogant when I first read about you, but I surely don't now. (laughs) And that's just my own arrogance that comes out. I think. Yeah. Um, So, um, and I love how you say, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful stuff right there. Um, and yeah, I'm still working on forgiving myself. I'm not really quite sure for what, cause I haven't done any horrible, <laughs> but I, it's just stupid, right? I mean, I'm not stupid, but that is just, it's just, I guess it's just who I am, but yeah. And with the being, I guess I have a lot of fear in that because I'm so quirky and awkward and weird and not mainstream 
Yeah, I like uh, it. You know, and at work, I have to be careful because people look at me weird and, you know, we're, we're professional nurses. And, but with the coaching, you know, I know I have to find my where my power is. I know it's there. I feel it through God, through, you know, it comes through me. It's not, it is me, but it's not the human me, you know. Yes. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, and I, with, in the book, I noticed that I had trouble uh, reading it as me. Mm -hmm. I, I keep, oh, wait, I'm supposed to read this as me, not Steve. And that it's so powerful when I did that because yes. I could, we're all, I, I agree with you. We're all equal. We all have it in us. Every one of us have it in us. Yes. We just have to tap into it and yeah. Um, shed all the, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. And I just, uh, I just, I like to mention, I, um, a little over a year ago, I married a man that was in prison 38 years. And this man is an inspiration. Yes. He mm -hmm. didn't think he was ever going to get out. And he helped men in there. He, he was in, he got put in at 17 and he, um, for murder, you know, he was just caught up in all this bad stuff. And then he had, he joined a gang in prison because he thought he had to, to, to survive. Right. And then yes. when he was mm -hmm. about eight years in, um, the gang, the prison gang was going to kill women and children. And he's like, I can't be part of that. I can't be part of that. So, um, he came clean to the officers and then he, I think he got sober. Um, he's got 32 years of sobriety, something like that. But then, so he turned, right. And then he helped people in there. He helped the officers. So yeah. that man is, a, when you're talking about marriages and we have a lot of problems in our marriage too, because he's integrating to the outside world. He's never, yeah. so, but he is just, it's work, but, but he love he's, he, he loves life so much. How could he not, right? He's not ever been in the outside world. So, um, and it was totally a God thing how we even met and got together. So um, anyway, um, he's got a powerful story. I think he should share with the world someday, but um, and not just in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, but um, because that takes a lot of, I don't know what to be inside, not knowing you're going to get out and still help people and not, you know, and turn your life around. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I just, um, I admire you and I'm so grateful and honored to be sitting here with all of you. Thank you. Could I say something to you? Please. Thank you for sharing. There is a woman who um, I've been in communication with and she's, I think she's going to India, but she, her husband's in prison. Mm -hmm. He's been there for about 25 years. Um, she sent him the book. It's a miracle of what's happened in prison and what he's doing and what she's doing. Because see, I, I know that underneath all of her behavior is pure being and pure love. If we can get to that. And then when people make mistakes, if we could like be a little lighter, it makes it easier. But this man is doing things inside the prison to make it possible for people wow. to go to India, including what he's coaching his wife on how to generate money and send it over to pay for the ticket he would like to be in, but he's in prison. How's wow. that? How's wow. that? Yeah. Wow. It's That's just powerful. Inspirational. Powerful. I would love to go to India, but I don't know if I can uh, swing it. <laughs> well, what, what I would suggest that you do is for, for all of you is that there's been, let me try to tie this in a place. How, how, what are we on a time limit? Do we have any more time? You have plenty of time. How are we doing? So I don't want to rush anything, but I also don't want to not cover something. Yep. So I'm going to cover two things at once. I'm going to cover that. I really want you to know that if you've read this book and had any shift in your being, any shift, then who you are now is different than when you started. Mm. Get the audible, get the book, listen to the audible and reread the book and really get it about you. I have clients, the book's been out just over a year that have re read it eight times and have massive breakthroughs. This isn't a one-time mm -hmm. book. This is a, you keep changing, read it again. Now, let me, right. so I encourage you all to do that, even though you've all watched it. And the ones that said you'd watch TBO, LITNFL, I promise you it would be worth your time. When I went to London, and I'll do the same thing in India, when I mean the same thing, I don't mean like mechanically, technically, state of being. When the people that, that were in London came, I asked them, how many of you have read this book? And read it from the back, back cover, front two pages, et cetera. And this is the short version. 
is the number of people that stood up. I said, if you read this book and you read the back page, the front two pages, and you you transferred transformed your state of being, stay stay standing. And then I said to this whole group, there's 500 and something people in it. I said, there's only one person in this room that should sign that book. Do you know who that is? Yourself. The person who read it and the person that did it, you. I, I didn't sign a book in London. I won't sign a book in India. This isn't about me. It's about the reader. So I invite you to re go through the book. And I invite those of you, and, and it's going to be a little late, because but anybody who can get a visa and get to India, you, there will never be an experience like this on the earth up to this time, unless we do another one like it, because you're going to have people that have read it, had transformation. The speakers are people that I either coach. Every one of them is paying their way. They are not being paid. Nobody in the whole thing is being paid. All the money goes to the daughters of India. So if any of you can go, it's like, oh, let's sell another seat. It will be life transforming just being in the room. I've told Ankish, uh, I mean, uh, Runjan, that mm -hmm. when it sells out and people call, don't say we don't have any more seats. Tell them there are no seats. Come stand in the hallway. Come Come be in the car in the parking lot, be anywhere near the building and send us some money so we can put it to the daughters of India and you'll experience it. So nobody will be turned away. And I invite you, if any one of you can actually make that happen, it'll be the greatest thing you did for you. Count on that. And it doesn't mean you need to go. Some of you may not. But if somebody said, I'm going to figure out how to do that, and you need to go get your visa done because it takes about four weeks. But if you're there, you'll come up to me and say, Boy, let me tell you all the events that happened to get me here, who I became, who I met here, and what I experienced. You mm -hmm. couldn't pay a million dollars for it. So that's enough about that. Now, <clears throat> if it's okay with you, unless somebody else, I want to I want to talk to you a minute about commitment. Okay. When I say in TBOLATNFL, failure to commit is the high cost of low living. I mean it. Like when I say being is everything. Failure to commit myself. And failure to commit that person, either side of it, that's it's just the equation is not going to work very well. And so everything that you see that I do or created is learning to commit others and commit myself. So, like I say, anything I've asked you to do, I'm going to do. I will reread the book again before I go to see what, what I can learn about being. The one I just asked you to do. I will do that myself. Literally. So. I want to tell you about this beautiful man, BNS, from mm. India. I didn't know he existed a month ago or six weeks or some amount. I didn't know him 10 years ago. I knew him in the last three months or the last month. But about six weeks ago, I didn't know he existed. I'm going to tell you the story. And then have you apply it to your clients, to your spouses. And this is my way of being. I am not, even, even like I said, go post that. You could put it on it or you can ask them to do something. Just getting them to request it is having them take action. They got to commit to do something. It's not just there. They got to say, yeah, I want it. Just that little teeny thing is what makes the difference. <clears throat> I coach a gal who I think is extraordinary. She married someone that she was 10 years older than he was. And she really kind of had, she's really responsible for a lot of the, the uh, self-developmental self work in the world. Her name is Becky Robbins. Mm -hmm. And you want to do the math on that. Just calculate what who she may have married when he was 10 years younger. I, I, I've been coaching her for two years. She'll speak in India. And she will be speaking about what she learned about being, not doing. And, she, she, and you can go find this on YouTube. The interview of Becky Robbins with uh, Alan Thompson, the guy who did all the research in the book. So who she's being, she was going to be interviewed by this BNS. And then she was interviewed by BNS. And I used that interview as a coaching session to say, hey, you missed a lot of opportunities. What you could have done with this guy. And she says to me, well, he was going this way and he wanted to go that way. And I said, no one's going this way and that way unless you want to go this way and that way. You have some say. So I walk her through it and she sees it. And I said, see here when he said this and you said, I needed to answer that. I said, no, you didn't. You could say this. BNS, that's a good question about the rain in Spain, but I want to talk about an event in India. 
Mm. See, you, we're not we're not captured. You have a right to speak. And then she saw that. And so I coached her on that. So guess who I'm going to be when this guy wants to interview me? This is how it went down. He'll be at the event. He's got five people to be at the event. In addition to that, he's got his sister and his mother. And he's put this thing you think 500,000 Indian people get to see it. Now, let me tell you how it happened. Because nothing happens except in a conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I coached Becky on what she could have done. And I said, you'll get another chance at that. And she has, and she just blew it out of the water at a different interview. <clears throat> so I called BNS. He doesn't know me from anyone. I just thank him for taking the time to interview Becky Robbins. That's it. That's my call. Thank you. That night he texts me and says, hey, could I interview you? I said, call me. Now, this is the first time I'm really in communication with this guy other than saying thanks. And he says, I said, call him. He says, hey, I'd like to interview you. And I said, well, let me, and this is my, my version of it. If he, he could have a different version, the two things would be right. true at the same time. Somebody mm -hmm. can love the Beatles and the parents could think they just yell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's right? Both of them. So he has a point of view. This is mine. I say to him, if you want to do this interview, you're going to have to know where this money's going. And then I create who the daughters of India are. And I create why we're doing it. Otherwise, he's doing an interview on something. He doesn't even know why we're doing it. Mm. And he said, OK, so if I do that, can I interview? I said, no, buckle your seatbelt on and listen for a minute. No, but you need to know that just for the opportunity to ask me if you could interview me. And I probably will say no. Because, see, I'm not having him do this for me. I'm doing it for him. I'm committed for who's across from me, but only always I'm going to grow them. They can like it. They don't like it. I said to them. So I said, no, it's, it's like what you need to do. Do you have a book? And he knew about the book. I said, if you want to interview me, you're going to need to read the back cover of that book, <laughs> read the front two pages and read the book about yourself. Do you understand? I said, yeah. I said, why would I want you to interview me? You don't even know what I'm up to. You want me to just tell you it? I want you to be with me on the interview. So I'm going to grow and This didn't accidentally happen. I said, so you need to do that. And I said, when you get in the book, you're going to come to a place. Everything's in conversation. And I've got to keep my conversation going because I can't create any without it. And I hope I wear my, I hope I wear my whole life out serving. <laughs> so I say to him, when you get to a thing called TBOLATNFL, now picture he's Indian and I, whatever I am speaking, my words sound crazy to him. So I'm going through each letter of T, B, O, so he can know what I'm saying. So that's a five minute conversation. It was fun. And I say to him, I can relate to that. To that. You I need to totally read it. To you need to read it. I mean, watch that video about you. And I need you to watch the introduction. Don't miss the introduction and watch it about you because I need you to be committed to understanding being. So if we ever do an interview, you get that. You're committed, you understand being, and you know where the money's going. Then can I interview you? No, hold on. Tight, slow down, buddy. There's more to do. And know this, being asked that you may come back and do all of this, and I may tell you, no, I'm not going to do an interview because I don't do interviews. So I'm real clear with people. I'm not swapping him anything. I'm actually serving the dude. Mm. can you hear that this is why i'm with yeah. everybody this is who you could be too if you are with me you win if you're with me you win yeah. and all my clients know that so i say to him after you get an experience of being from the book and you've watched tbolit nfl you'll have a commitment of what i'm up to and i need you to speak to five people in your world that you tell them the experience you had with the book and they need to have it with the book. And they and you need to get a seat in this thing you want to interview me on. Now, when you do all of that and come back, then we'll start a possibility of me saying yes or no. And I will probably tell you no. Can you hear me? Yeah. So he goes and does all, he gets that all done in three weeks. And he comes back. 
And again, he said, okay, now can, can we do the interview? And I said, no, there's more for you to do. Mm. I asked him if he'd listen to the Midnight Miracle or the Creating the Bean. And they're both available on YouTube. Anybody can get these. They're seeds. You know, put them on the shelf or let them just be words. Instead of write it down and go see it, it's up to you. What was the second one? Sorry, Creating I can't write that being. fast. Creating, being. Creating a being. And, and that's just me talking to a group of people like this, except it's about the India event. But somebody could watch it and get their life out of it. So I said, you need to watch those two. So he comes back when he's done. Now he's a little, my point of view, he's in a different place. He says to me, I get you. I get the event. I get what you're up to. This is amazing. What else do I need to do so I can have the opportunity for you to tell me no? He's in, he's, 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 now he's, he's in it. Yeah. And I said, yeah. man, I love that. I love where you're at. And I said, here we go. Here's what it is. Here's what you need to do, BNS. There are a lot of people helping with this. And I'm doing a lot of work over here. And I'm the guy that is going to speak at the end of it. I said, there's a lot of people helping, but I, I, if you want to interview me, you're going to have to come from the position of this be the best interview you've ever done in your life. You're going to have to understand why we're doing it, what it's about, be prepared as if, if no one else put someone in the event, this video would put 500 people in that place. When you can be that, I will do an interview with you that I've never done. He said, it's done, man. I will bring that. The next night we had the interview. It's whatever you saw taped. That's right. just him doing the questions and I don't know the questions and we're just dancing. At the end of that interview, when he said he's done taping it, I said, okay, now I want you to tape something for you to keep for you. This isn't to put out to the public. And I took the next five minutes to acknowledge him, who he was and what he did and how he moved that in such a way that would have me donate that time to him. Something I've never done. You won't find that anywhere. And I'm not trying to get a bunch more of those. That's not what I'm up to. And he said, I get it. He's not emotional like crying, but touched. And he says, I've had so many inspirations and revelations in this process of finding myself who I'm being. And even now when you talk to me, Steve, I just got an insight. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. And we're on different times. He's 12 hours ahead, so he can be in a different day than me. He says, tomorrow, I'm going to get up. I know exactly what to do. We just did the, the video that you asked for that could be good enough to have 500 people look at it and go somewhere. And again, I said, you're not committed to do it. I need you to be it. We got a bunch of people to do it. But if you're coming from that place, we're going to have something extraordinary. And he said, I'm going to get up tomorrow. And I'm going to go on tape and tell people about my experience of talking with you, getting the book, reading the book, sharing the book, and who I became. He did that and got it done in 24 hours. That's available. It's him. He's yeah. speaking in, in, in Indian, some dialect of Indian. I said, send it to me as soon as it's done. I want to understand it, but I will fill it. Hold on a second. I want you to meet my curator of my home. The oh. curator. Come here. This it's a blessing. Love. This is my love. This is Claudia. Hi. She's the curator Hi, of the home. Hi. This is, I love her. She's amazing. Hi. She helps us in so many ways. These are people that have read the book of being. Blessing, and Claudia. I'm, I'm reading it too. Ah, there Wonderful. you go. Oh. Bye. 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 So he says to me, Oh, he, he, he does it. I said, send it to me. I won't understand it, but I'll feel it. I could hardly listen to it. I was so touched by what he had done and who he'd become in about a month to create this thing, then see what he could do to help. And he is so invested to have this be great because, see, something's been required of him. Yeah. I do that every way I can. Anybody who communicates with me, I'll talk to him and say, I got something I can help you with if you promise to do it. Well, tell me what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is until you promise to do it. I've had people call me from Jerusalem. Hey, I got this problem. 
They don't know me. I don't know them. I can solve that problem. You got to promise to do what I'm going to tell you. Well, tell me it and I'll see if I can. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And they said, okay, I'm in. Okay, you need to get a plane ticket from Jerusalem to Hamburg, Germany. You need to go to Byron Katie. Tell her I want you in her nine-day course. You need to fly, pay for it, and be there. And I promise you, your problem will be solved when you're done. Boom, she does it. Who would you need to be to commit people for their good and not be a wimp about it? Well, I practice it. So if you watch the tape with BNS, I actually did what I was teaching Becky to do if she's being interviewed or she's in a conversation with her ex-husband or her husband or anybody, and we become a victim. I can't say what I want. You can say what you want. You may have to pay a price for it, but you're free. What was I saying? I've forgotten. You were talking about Becky Robinson. Yeah. Yes. So what I had taught her, you know, do this next time you're interviewed. I, as I'm talking to BNS, I use it right at the end. If you watch the video, he says, okay, Steve, do you have a seven day uh, challenge for us? Yeah. Well, that's a question he asked. Now, somebody would go, yeah, blah, 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 on some seven day challenge. I said, no, I don't want to give you a seven day challenge. A I want to give you a right now one day challenge. Anybody mm -hmm. that's been listening to me, go over, take your calendar, get the 25th clear, go over and buy a ticket, get the book and read the book before you go. That's my challenge. Now, who could anybody else could have said that? You'd have to be somebody that would do that. You'd have to be somebody that would do that. You don't manage the doing, you manage the being. So if I'm over here thinking uh, back to Susan, you had said you got some things I'm not sure about forgiveness. Here's the kind of thing we need to forgive ourselves for. I forgive myself for thinking my, me saying something wouldn't make a difference. It's not about uh, stealing $500,000. We steal ourselves. Oh, I can't say that. I forgive mm. myself for judging myself. I can't speak my truth. For the truth is, I'm dynamic, powerful, and say exactly what I think. Now, come from that being, you're going to do something different. So, BNS or other people that have, you're going to go see where they did their preamble, then put the video on, say, Oh, it's amazing that BNS convinced Steve Hardison to do this. See, that's a simple way to put in language. That's bullshit. And so do cows. <laughs> bullshit. And so do cows. See, that gets me out of swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Creative, eh? Yeah, that's smart. So, so that's simple for math. If somebody can read that, but that's the background of why that happened. And who he was fantastic before I met him, but I'm telling you, he's a different human being. He calls up. He says, I, we'd like to come stay with our, our home in India for a few days when you're here. And we've had a bunch of invitations. I said, we won't be doing that, but thank you. But that man will never be the same. And I helped grow him. And I didn't do it to get anything. I did it to grow him. And I, and I told my speakers, all of them that are going, if you go over there and try to get business, you will get the law of harvest and the law of harvest, that which I sow, I reap. So if you're cool and five people get your card in your book, you're going to work with those five people. Man, that was worth coming to India for. That's one level of reward. I said, leave that home and work with what I call the law of the universe. And that is when I give myself with nothing attached to another human being, I will never be able to fully get the compensation for that if I continue to come from that place. Mm. Bring that speaker oh. to that. Be for the people in the audience. When you're speaking, be for the other speakers. Don't be, who gave the best speech? Did I top them? Leave that home or don't come. So mm. that's the background on BNS. I appreciate what he's done. The work that he did in three days. Do that interview with me, his with himself doing stuff, putting people in. And then he says to me, he communicates a lot with me. You'll have that too. When you actually grow somebody, they, they fall in love with you. <laughs> I'm trying to love them and they fall in love with me. And I got love to give to 20 people. He said, on that Indian version, you probably didn't understand it. And I didn't until he said, blah, 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 ultimate coach, blah, 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 Steve. That's the only thing I could understand. But I felt his heart. He said, I offered the people that would commit to read the book 10 people that they could get the book. He said, Steve, they're gone. I'm going to do it with 50. See, this is a giver. 
This is a giver, not a taker. See, and, and it looks weird. Like if I give, I won't have anything. It's just the opposite. Opposite. If I give, mm -hmm. I'll have everything. Because yeah. he or she with the fewest needs is richest of all. That, that's about it for me, unless you want something else to say. And thank, I love you. Thank you for taking the time. If you said you'd do TBOA, TNFL, do it. If you said you'd redo the, the book, do it. If you, and I think if you get the audio, you'll be blown away. We listened to 150 people. And the guy who did the audio, and people listen to that and read the book, say, whoa, man, did that put a rocket under something? And if somebody can go to India, do it. If somebody can't go to India and you'd like to do something to help, do it. Do yeah. something. Get out of your getting. Get into your giving. I'm not questioning that you guys don't give, but, you know, increase it in whatever you do. You know, what Steve, do you want to do? First, I wanted to say thank you, and we appreciate you so much. And, you know, with as many conversations as me and you have had personally, even from the very first time when I actually asked you to be on our podcast, that's actually how the whole this whole thing came out, right? And you said no. Yep. But I'll give you a challenge, and I accepted the challenge. Yes, see because that. Because when we have our word, and and that's I know me and you had a conversation about this, is that we I don't have anything else but my word. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I can't fall back on anything besides what I'm committed to and what I'm committed to giving someone else. Yeah. And if I'm not committed to giving to you, then I'm not going to give you my word, yeah. because then it's just going to not have the value of what we're talking about. And so, you know, when we talk about commitment levels, it's also talking about the value behind it. Yes. And, I, and everyone on this call knows how, how committed I am to every single person on this call. Beautiful. How much I value them, how much I know that what me and Amanda are creating in this academy, that it's who you want to be. Who are you trying to create? What are you going to do? Not a cookie box cutter. You can do that. You can get that on social media. You can buy a YouTube that, right? What are you, each and every one of you, trying to create as an individual? Because everybody has their special human power that is going to be blessed for them. And that's just creating for what they want to be. Wow. And that being and understanding that is honestly like I've had this dream. Um, and I know me and you've spoken about this before. I have two kids with special needs and we're not heard. Uh, parents with special needs, we're, we're not heard. We're not valued a lot. And kid you not, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how this is going to work, but I am going to develop that program or that, that school that I told you about. Give it maybe five or 10 years, however long, maybe hopefully sooner, um, because it's the power of being, being heard, being valued. And that's the commitment I have with all of these people on this screen, because I believe in them so much. Yes. And for them to have this gift is a blessing even for me. Can I say something to you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, who you are being created this. You, you've had a conversation to have eight other people read a book and be prepared. That is really, really extraordinary. A lot of people wouldn't go to that effort. And then for the ones that did this, it's, it's amazing. Just feel, just feel what this is like. And I'm over here. I could have this many people and just have a conversation. Go, What's he talking about? But you're all so participative and you want it to work and you're for me. It makes things wonderful. And you've created that. You created it by having them come. They've created it by reading about it and, and listening about themselves. This is, this is amazing. I'm so glad I did it. It's not like I'm looking to do more. I've got plenty of stuff to do, but I'm grateful that I got to do this with you. And you created it being out of who you're being. And, and the, the thing you're saying you want to do, it will get done. Yeah. And, and, you, and you may, and again, this is just for you guys. There's, there's an Ultimate Coach Facebook group. The people that are on it are amazing. If yeah. you went over there and said, here's what my vision is, you'd have people come in and help do it or people that you, it's, it's amazing what you have. We have 7,500 people that are this. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing on there to be sold. No. State of being. So can I ask you another question? Thank you. Now, if I were in your office, I would get, and I could do this, I would get the permission of you and whoever else I need it. And I would get a camera and I would do my favorite shot of picking you up and holding you. And I would get a picture of us and let you know that I'm supporting that which you have. It's beautiful. It will happen. And I and some some people think, 
Well, you can't pick me up. I'm too big. I picked Deuce up. He weighs 386 pounds. So you better weigh 387 and then I'll go away. It might not, it might not, may not be able to work. So any of you going, oh, you can't pick me up. You want to bet? This old man has the strength. Now, I appreciate one quick question that. for you. That oh. beautiful picture over your shoulder. What is it? And who did it? Actually, I drew that. It's beautiful. Yeah, actually, I was actually pregnant with my with my son Rohan and I knew something was wrong even during pregnancy no one heard me no one was listening to me so I felt like a lion being silent wow and this vision came to me in my head and I think this is the first painting I have drawn in about 10 years and I have not picked up a painting since wow That's because amazing. It was just a very impactful thing. And to be honest with you, he is a force like a lion. Yes. He is determined. And, you know, he's my driving force. My husband, I love him. He's my rock. But, you know, when you're, when you don't have a voice and I have to carry that voice, yes. you know, it means a lot. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. But that's why the lion. For it's them. very, very valuable. Very, uh, sentimentally valuable priceless piece right there yeah yeah this will never get taken out of my my office ever just thank you, you know. is there it's, anything else you want to say bina no um, i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly you are pronouncing my name thank correctly you. not very many puts me to tears steve <laughs> then, then, then could i say something to the group except to each person absolutely yeah, I'm, I'm seeing all of you on the screen so it's like wherever it's at and i and i and i mean what i'm saying Tyler, I appreciate you taking some time with me. And I hope that what you will do is really realize that what you have to say is really, really important. Susan, thank you for the love that you are for the person you're with. Very few people in the world could be you. I'm amazed by that. Thank you, thank you for your love for what you do. Elizabeth, thank you for what you're doing with your husband. Keep loving him. You know, sometimes we're slow. The other day I said to Amy, you know, I'm 67 now, but I said, I think that took me 64 years to learn that. I'm sorry I'm so slow. So give wow. the guys a break because we are slow. I mean, we can't even multitask. <laughs> Amanda, if I could say anything to you that would actually touch your heart the most of what I could say, what would I have said to you? In acknowledging you. Forget about how it sounds. To always be authentically you. So thank you for being authentically you. And I love that you do that. Monica, I'm gonna ask you the same question and go a little, go, go as deep as you can with you. If I acknowledged you, and I said something that would actually be the most powerful thing that I could say to you, what would I have said to you? You can do anything you set your mind to because you are you. I, I want you to know that that's possible for you and you want to step into that. Thank you, thank you. Daphne. Thank you for your pizzazz for life. I love mm -hmm. your style. I mean, you have energy, you are unique. Uh, you, we, we, we'd have trouble if I'm in the room with you because I'd be cuddling you so bad, you'd think, hey, this guy's weird. <laughs> and I'm serious, man, I'd be, you, I'd be <laughs> if you read in the book about um, a gal named Latrina Williams, she's at CVS. Oh yeah. Yes, you, I remember you, that yes. when you went in for the, um, for like the prescription Latrina. refill, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I'm so in love with her. <laughs> I'd be cuddling you so bad. And I love your state of being. And I love, I love your openness to forgive a world that has been not kind. I love that you can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, how are we doing down there? Good. And what are you thinking right now? Literally, stop your thought and give it to us. Love. Say again. Love. Love. Good. So 
So I'm going to share something with you. I want you to know that the next person that you see or talk to could use some of that from you. Find out how you can do that in a way that's acceptable to that person, be it a stranger or your, some, your sister. Will you do that? Yes. Watch what happens. Brianna, I loved hearing you speak. It's fun to hear you talk. I love the tonation of your voice and what shapes our voice is who we're being. Thank you for being who you are. Let it out. Unleash it all. It's not dress rehearsal. This is your life. I love you all. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you. Do what you said you'd do and gift some other people whatever you've learned from in your life from whatever tools you get. Plant the seeds and give them around. Thank, Thank you, Steve. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're gonna get our, you're gonna get my gift in the mail. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You do the I same. Hope, I hope to see Thank one you. of you in Mumbai if that works. And if not, I love you. Bye bye. Love you. Love you, Steve. Love, love you. you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. That was awesome.